Headlines Dredo Administration Demanding Regional Status Good evening. This is African Renaissance Television Services with your evening news. I'm your anchor, Caleb Tensai. Stay tuned. Dredo Administration Demanding Regional Status One of the two cities along with Addis Ababa with a charter for its own governance. Dredua City's administration has called on lawmakers to change the status of the city to be integrated into one of its neighboring regions or have a regional status of its own. A reporter has more on the story. Dredua and the transport hub and industrial city in the eastern part of Ethiopia has called on lawmakers to find a solution to its serious budget shortage. The administration has blamed the shortage on tax collected in the city being wholly in the hands of the federal government and, unlike Addis Ababa, having less access to federal help and infrastructure building. According to an article by the reporter quoting Abdul Jawad Mohammed, one of the two MPs representing Dredua has said, Dredua is not eligible to benefit from the federal tax allocation schemes because it is not a regional state. As a result, the administration is unable to provide even basic services to the population. The city with its crucial location and the Ethiopia Djibouti trade corridor as well as its heavy industry is poised to take a substantial amount of revenue should it be granted a regional status. Abdul Jawad has added to this statement by saying, The administration governs both urban and rural populations. The population needs public services like healthcare, education, and infrastructure expansion, among others. The issue is complicated as the charter to form the city administration is intertwined with Ethiopia's constitution and any change to its status might require amendments to the constitution. The representatives have expressed hope that the raised issue will be solved with the Dredua population included in the discussion. France grants 32 million euros for rehabilitation of conflict-affected areas. In a signing ceremony held in the compound of the French embassy residence with the presence of France's foreign minister and state minister of finance from Ethiopia, France gave a grant of 32 million euros for rehabilitation of electric power lines in the war-affected regions of Amara, Tigray and Afar. More on the story from our reporter. The French Foreign Minister came to Ethiopia. The French Foreign Minister came to Ethiopia with a 32 million euro grant. This grant was aimed at the rehabilitation of electric power lines in the war affected regions of Amara, Tigray, and Afar. But the grant also includes a short term support for agricultural activities in those regions. From the 32 million euros, 28 million was sourced from the AFD, Agence Francis de Development, while the rest was covered by the European Union. The signing ceremony was attended by France's Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Catherine Colonna, State Minister of Finance for Ethiopia, Samir Tasoaso, Ethiopia Electric Power CEO, Asheb Berbalcha, and European Union delegation to Ethiopia. In what seemed to be a busy day for the visiting Foreign Minister of France, the ceremony started later than the expected time, and the exhausted minister gave a short briefing expressing France's readiness to support the peace process in Ethiopia and the consecutive rehabilitation efforts. On her part, Honorable Samir Tasoaso, State Minister of Finance for Economic Cooperation, thanked the French government on behalf of the Ethiopian government for its support and also stated that since the signing of the Pretoria Peace Agreement, several countries are keen to cooperate and support Ethiopia. Unfortunately, the signing parties were not available to receive questions from the media present at the ceremony citing a busy schedule. The visit of the French foreign minister accompanied by her German counterpart came in the same week the newly appointed Chinese foreign minister also visited Ethiopia. Now, on to international news. Suspected jihadists kidnap women in Burkina Faso. Local officials in northern Burkina Faso have given a statement that around 50 women have been abducted. The suspects of this kidnapping are jihadists. More on the story from our reporter. The kidnappings happened on Thursday and Friday in Arbinda, but the news has just emerged as much of the area has been blockaded by Islamist militants. Locals of the region said that two groups of women were taken as they were out gathering leaves and wild fruits. Fortunately, a minority of the women escaped and raised the alarm. The BBC reported that one resident told the AFP news agency that the women got together to go and gather leaves and wild fruits in the bushes because there is nothing left to eat. Arbinda, located in the Sahel region, has seen frequent jihadist insurgencies. The roads leading in and out of the region have been blockaded by the jihadists. There is severe hunger as food supplies are limited and the humanitarian situation is desperate. Tunisians protest their president. It hasn't been easy for Tunisia, especially now with the country facing worsening political and economical problems. Frustrated with the state of the economy, thousands of Tunisians have risen up against President Kais Said. A crowd was gathered in the capital Tunis to demand the end of his presidency. Yabser Awandimtaka has more on the story. 
Tunisians are frustrated, even those who supported Mr. Said since he came to power in 2021. The increasing debt has left the country incapacitated to the point where they struggle to import basic goods, including staples such as coffee, milk, and sugar. BBC reports that the government has so far been unable to secure an international bailout, leading one protester to tell the AFP news agency that the coup has brought them to famine and poverty. The protests in the capital were organized by two different opposition groups with a heavy police presence outside the interior ministry to prevent scuffles. Several killed in DRC church bomb attack. The DRC is a new to conflict and heart-reaching news. In their continued strife, the eastern part of the country has seen an explosive where at least 10 people have been killed and dozens of other wounded. The bomb attack happened during a service at a Protestant church according to the country's army. A reporter has more on the story. The explosion that happened on Sunday in the eastern part of the country killed at least 10 people and wounded 39 others. This report comes from the army spokesman Anthony Moulache. The bomb went off in the city of Kasindi, located on the border of Uganda. Moulache said that the attack was likely carried out by the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF, a Ugandan armed group that has pledged allegiance to ISIL, or ISIS. Later on Sunday, the ISIL group claimed responsibility for the attack. Survivors and witnesses said that the blast severed some people's limbs from their bodies. Now, on to entertainment news. 15 films bid for top prize in Africa's premier film festival. The Facebook of Film Festival is here. What some consider to be Africa's top cinema event, the organizers of Facebook announced on Friday that 15 feature-length movies are vying for the top prize. The festival began in 1969 in Burkina Faso, Ogadougou, and draws thousands of movie fans and professionals from across the continent. It is also closely followed by the US and European movies industries, which scout the event for new films, talent, and ideas. A total of 170 films are competing across 11 categories in the upcoming event. Contending films include short film, documentaries, TV series, and animation, Facebook has said. These were the news we had for you tonight from African Renaissance Television Services. Thank you for watching. Good night.